Our Flexion Presentation, Group 2, Article 2. Colonial Sugar Production in the Spanish Philippines, Calamba and Negros, Peter. Filomeno v. Aguilar, Jr. It's me, Gimbo. Hello, her co host, it's me, Binyan. Hi, it's the Sugar cultivation has progressed from its tragic beginnings as sweet delights to an economic powerhouse. The world's rising sugar demand drove the spread of slavery and sparked bloody uprisings and conflict. Sugar became a staple of Filipino cuisine and a minor component of local and international trade. But development was hampered by Spanish apathy toward cash crop farming and a lack of global demand. Despite our immediate associations with sugar and its moderate growth, little is known about its past and current effects on the industry, which experienced a more rapid expansion at the end of this period. Basic sugar production processes were better understood at the beginning of the 19th century, Philippine sugar producers were ready to benefit from the expansion of the global market brought on by the Industrial Revolution and changes in colonial economic policy. This article is made by Pilemeno V. Aguilar Jr., a professor in the Department of History at the Taneo de Manila University. From the Journal of Southeast Asian Studies, Copyright at the National University of Singapore. The chronicles of the two modes of export oriented sugar production and its proportions to the Minishena de Calamba, as well as the success of Negro sugar production in the late 19th century, are part of Philippine history Spanish data, as are their connections to our current struggles. Jose Rizal once said in his essay, Sobre la indolencia de los Filipinos which was serialized in La Solidar Solidaridad in 1890, that wa working hard in the Spanish Philippines made no sense because the rich person was exposed to all kinds of vexations. El rico en la tierra se expone a todos las vejaciones, a todas las molestias. Who would rather work, who would, who would bother working with all these sanctions, he wondered. Here is why you should listen carefully. Because this has implications for the way things are now. If this thought occurs to you, what do you think if this happens again? It is not just a fine sugar product, but the years of how our Filipino ancestors have been dominated by Dominican friars, mistreated, discriminated against, faced wage inequality, and faced double taxes pushed by the Spanish and Dominicans, as well as a government appealed Supreme Court case have joined its forces of offender and wrongdoer in our country. We all know that we are currently struggling with our economy is the system we chose. To begin, Calamba and Negros were polar opposites. First, let us talk about Hacienda de Calamba, a monastic state with an enclave economy. The refusal to modernize their equipment while relying on local wealthy inquilinos left them penniless during the mid-1880s. When the rents were high and the world sugar price was plummeting. As the story goes, they left us high and dry. Negros, on the other hand, began its conquest for sugar production dominance in the late 1850s and early 1860s, with ascendants of varying sizes owned by a variety of nationalities. The owners were also afraid to take risks on ordering equipment, which led them to their success and ultimately provided them with better sugar quality. However, when the white refined sugar became a trend, they could no longer compete with the high quality wheat sugar. With all of sugar productions, enormous success comes a great disgrace. We have noticed a significant factor that is still pre prevalent from their time to our time, and that is racism. The Spanish colonial era was a trivial time for us. We were harassed and branded as animals. Only the Spaniards got richer, while we, the natives, got poorer. Even the members of the church exploited us and took the beg for their mercy. They were supposed to give us virtual strength as our hardships went on. Yet they were the ones pushing us down. It was not a good life, living. 
The immense division between the races was felt to the core by our fellow Filipino ancestors, both men and women. We had no one to turn to. The law, religion, and government turned their back against us. As a result, we continued to be unaware of our rights. Without Dr. Dr. Rizal's sentiments and observation of our country's system, we would never know that there's so much more that we should fight for. Not just our individual rights, but the land that we were born for. Also, it was mentioned that if there were ever no Dominican friars, agri holding the Hacienda de Calamba and someone was able to learn and adapt the use of agriculture, agricultural machinery and technology that should be implemented, we should have earned those things and deserve to have the money back in our hands since the farmer's blood and sweat worked hard for it, yet a small amount or none have, have it on their palms. In relation to the present, the same mentality is still been ingrained in some people. During the peak of the coronavirus pandemic caused by an Asian country, everyone was fueled by fear and anger. These emotions together turn to hate, and thus the Asian racism was. It's unbelievable how divided still people are. Rizal went through that during his time and he has been dead for 126 years. Surprisingly, it's still present. For instance, kindly reflect on the situation lately. Those instances were terrifying for our fellow Filipinis, Filipinos living abroad, particularly the United States, where there were reports of a family being attacked at a California drive through a 51-year-old being attacked, and a 7-year-old being assaulted. Both incidents occurred in New York. There are likely to be many more. When will we experience a time where we don't feel the need to be cautious and inferior with how we are built? Just because they are bigger doesn't mean that our rights are less valuable. History does repeat itself again. It's scary when you actually hear and see it come to life. Coupled with this, there is no immediate action to use law to fight for our rights. There is no point in awareness campaign if people are still being abused and discriminated because of their nationality. Thank you, Zia. Indeed, that really saddens me as a concerned citizen of our nation. Have you ever thought, when can we ever feel that other nationalities are not threatening, threatening us and demeaning us because of our, sorry, because of how our history has shaped us? This article examines how corruption has made it more difficult for farmers to do their job. Since the Dominican friars established rules that oppress haciendas by ensuring that their wealth was deprived in some way, whether through coercion or malicious charity, by forcing them to positions that demanded obedience in their lower lands. When the concerns were raised with the proper authorities, the Supreme Court, the same guardians of the land forcibly evicted the people from their own homes had their homes burned to show their authoritarian rule. As sad as it is, that was the reality for the Filipino farmers in that era, no matter their social status. In this time period, though, it is not a foreign force cursing the farmers in the Philippines, but their own countrymen. In this time, it's your social status determines if you are the oppressor or the king. It could not be observed that farmers are forced to sell their rice at small profit margins because of the import importation of rice from foreign nations. It begs the question, why is there a need for the importation of rice when our country is an agricultural nation? It is baffling to think that we are taxing the same farmers as profits are barely breaking in even just because. The main reason was that rice prices were increasing, and to combat this, foreign prices were taxed the tariff upon entering the Philippine market. But because of that, the needed resources to grow rice, fertilizers, and other raw farm materials have also risen in value, removing the actual benefits that were aimed at assisting the farmers. It is such an ironic law that undermines the actual progress of farmers here in the Philippines, putting them on hold from making actual development in that area. Furthermore, this is also discusses the subpar quality of the sugar products that the Philippines are producing. The Negro sugar production needed a race of people to get their hands on some agrarian land to do sugar production because the place was terra incognita, meaning that the corrupt officials had no idea what was truly going on in that area. So compared to their Columba counterparts, they have more freedom in the things they have planned to do. 
Without the restrictions and bureaucratic nightmare, the Negro sugar production surpassed of Columbus. Though their production increased over time, their products were inferior to those produced in foreign competitive countries. The U.S. market now has a taste of new, re new refined white sugar made from beet sugar. The demand for sugar from the Philippines, which is made from sugarcane, has significantly dropped. That is why those countries that are producing better sugar have duty-free access to the U.S. market, making more profits, while the Philippines still has to pay the tax on just selling the goods in foreign lands that are not in demand. These problems, costs that are not, are not a mystery and could be traced back to the same reasons that made Calamba have a terrible track record. Aside from the reasons stated above, the equipment needed to better process sugar was obsolete in Negros. The new equipment that was supposed to be restored was struck in the bureaucracy between investors and users. These agreements and negotiations have caused huge delays in getting the necessary upgrades that would have been made before the Supreme Court's decision to not give duty-free access to the Philippine sugar export. These kind of incomp incompetency is not just in the past, it is observ observable even today. Around 50,000 Filipino seamen could lose their jobs on EU ships. This is because of their non-compliance with the International Convention of Standards of Training, Certification, and Watchkeeping for Seafarers. This thing is it's not just a sudden change. This was announced years ago and was raised again just recently because of the political elections this year. But due to pride and negligence, you thought that supporting the platform for opposition would mean an attack on your personal need. Even if it was not your fault, for your own benefit. Now, they can't just ignore the elephant in the room and must face their decision to do nothing about it and face the consequences. Sadly, one of them is being fired from a job on EU-related vessels. As a result, you'll never be able to deny how those dreadful Dominican friar systems shaped our sugar production back then and analogize the prosperous of Negros because there are no Dominican friars controlling the system and the people involved are waged fairly and have wide opportunities to explore other sources of income to generate as opposed to the situation at Hacienda Calamba. All of those being mentioned, we should never set aside since it depicts how we are today. We are lucky to be able to witness the past which can help us to urge righteous actions for our country. These circumstances can assist us in mirroring the actions and decisions of those we put in charge and changing the system. Because all we want is change and equality. Everyone deserves to live the life they deserve. Likewise, even when there are crises affecting the sugar industry's production, the system that should be shared should be equitable. It is sad to think that Dominican fire sugar production had a significant impact on the Rizal family.